Listen to the people. Listen to humanity. Listen to the parent. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent TV. Listen to the people. Listen to humanity. Listen to the parent. Parent TV. Hello, welcome to New York Parrot's Literary Corner. I'm Dustin Pickering, your noble and honest host. Today we have episode 208. We've reached past our 200th episode milestone. Glad to have you viewers out there paying attention. Thanks for being with us through that this journey, and we're going to keep on moving. And you guys are just absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much for viewing. And today we have Margaret A. Fox, and she is a poet. Her first collection of poems, Touched by Stars, was published by Finishing Line Press in 2019. Recently, she read her poems at Tongue and Groove Midwest. She received the Mayor of Cincinnati Humanitarian Award in 2016 and holds a MA degree in Interdisciplinary Studies and Social Science from Antioch University, Yellow Springs, Ohio. She resides in Cincinnati, Ohio, where she continues to write and work. Thanks for joining us on the program today, Margaret. How's your day going? Oh, it's going very well, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Excellent. We're glad to have you. It's it's uh, wonderful to talk with you. So tell us a little bit about your book, uh, Touched by Stars. Uh, how did it feel to release your, your first poetry collection? Well, I, I, uh, I'm still uh, pinching myself. Mm -hmm. It was a major surprise. Um, the whole idea of this book uh, took quite some time, and it was it's related to my being in graduate school and uh, developing a, a final thesis on uh, what we call a cosmopoesis, so it's mm -hmm. uh, the making of meaning in the universe. Oh, so, wow. Uh, right. Uh, so it's actually connecting um, the making of meaning uh, it's connecting uh, the universe, human beings, and Earth. And it's that mm -hmm. relationship between the three of us. And I got three of those um, entities. And I got so excited, um, even though I know most people know this, that we are made up of the elements of the stars. Right. And that we are all connected throughout the world mm -hmm. uh, for that reason alone. Um, and so from there, I just uh, went forward and um, after my or during my studies, I got interested in the origins of the universe. Mm -hmm. which, uh, it, yeah, that's and a I, it's a really fun subject. I like I like to read about you know theoretical physics myself. It's a really uh, intriguing subject, and there's so many ideas that are, you know are being contested, and you know it's it's really fun to read about some of the theory out there. Yeah, it, and so. Um, I wanted to make it more than a theory. Mm -hmm. and I wanted to develop it, telling the story in a narrative form. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that uh, the thesis was the uh, the heart of the matter, which means us, you and me, and everybody else, mm -hmm. making a meaning. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to develop a narrative that talked about um, how did human beings um, find meaning uh, from the beginning of time and uh, prior to organized religion. And so right. I went back and mm. did a lot of um, reading in anthropology and um, uh, framed it in that light as well as cosmology because of its origins. Mm -hmm. And I then tied it to uh, the universe, but also to ecology and mm -hmm. some of our environmental um, pioneers. Um, wow. Yeah. 
quite a, a lot of intersections going on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, then to ground that, I use the term, uh, the Greek word of poesis, which means to make. And mm -hmm. that actually is the root um, of poetry, mm -hmm. of the word poetry. And I framed the narrative of the origins of the universe and of uh, the first two leggeds who left um, East Africa, only about 150 of them. And why? Mm -hmm. Why would they do that? And right. how, how did they evolve? Mm -hmm. What did they find? Um, thrilling and beyond their understanding that kept them moving. And uh, so I frame it in terms of the stars, the luminosity of the stars. Hmm. And um, I began and ended each one of my chapters with a poem. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's how this book started. It has evolved uh, into something else uh, based on that narrative. Uh, so what you write in a thesis is very different than and uh, what finally your poems uh, express and um, are framed. Quite an ambitious uh, first book, it sounds like. Uh, it makes me think about a book uh, by Ernest Cardinal called The Cosmic Canticle, which sort of deals with a similar approach about, uh, you know, the origins of, of meaning and, you know, through the universe. And, you know, it's a really interesting uh, poetry collection. It's you know, pretty thick. It, it's, uh, it was published by, I think, Curbstone Press many years well, back. My, my book's very thin, Dustin. <laughs> it's hard to consolidate so much information and thought and just like a little thing, you know. Yeah, yeah it, it's pretty impressive uh, project there. So how did you manage to narrow down so many subjects and create, like, I mean, it seems like you're basically looking for the origin of what we call meaning, you know, yes. what we're, uh, what, how do we develop meaning and why do we even seek it? And, and uh, so how do you consolidate like such a broad question in a small collection of poetry? Oh. Um, well, um, I started with uh, some poems regarding the move out of East Africa into mm -hmm. a broader um, spectrum of Earth. Um, I talk a little bit about the elements of the stars. I talk about relationships between um, uh, the Earth, the stars, and human beings, and that evolves into a more contemporary um, treatment of communicating that relationship. Mm -hmm. so I, I go from some poems that talk literally talk about the cave paintings, and I I've been an artist all my life, painting and now poetry, uh, and I also have a day job, <laughs> no. so I'm, right. I'm co constantly integrating. Uh, that triad of uh, the universe, human beings, and Earth. And it's um, it sounds like a big concept, but we live it every day. And so the poem right. is take, kind of take it for granted to an extent. You know, it's, our everyday world is so present to us, we don't think much of it. You know, we don't think about it and reflect on it. And that, you know, when you talk about developing meaning and, and, and trying to understand where we're coming from in relation to everything else. I think we do that a uh, daily process of that, whether- and, and, and That's right. And I wanted to um, focus on a contemporary uh, narrative about that. So we, hmm. uh, many of many people today, all ages are, I never find anybody who isn't searching for that. Right. For, you know, what they do every day or in their work or still searching because they haven't found it. So I really wanted to focus and ground uh, that search in contemporary uh, culture. So I'm hoping that's what I did in the book, but that's mm -hmm. the thing, touched by stars. So we're all touched by those elements of stars. Uh, we are all um, the heart of the matter. Right. We're all searching for meaning or a purpose. And that evolves. And that's what happened, um, you know, I'm, I'm simplifying the story, but that's essentially mm -hmm. what happened with, you know, our uh, the people that came before us and through evolution. Right. Um, yeah. And so well, interesting. I, find, I find that very exciting. It is. It's very exciting. I mean, it, it convert all of that converges so many different things. I mean, as you said, you studied anthropology and cosmology and, you know, variety of subjects to kind of come to this understanding of, 
you know, uh, what is meaning? Why do we seek it? And it's a very simple sounding question, but once you dig into it, every, like everything else, layer after layer after layer, you know, it can be exhausting. So yeah. how was your editing process for the book? Did you find it exciting, frustrating, exhilarating? Well, I didn't know. Um, I knew I needed to uh, try to submit this for publication. Mm -hmm. I had no clue what that meant. So I, um, I first went to a, a friend of mine and colleague who has published and asked her to look through the manuscript and make suggestions, which she did. And I followed most of them and submitted the uh, manuscript to uh, uh, Mission Line Press because I heard it was a very good press mm -hmm. for the kinds of topics I was um, discussing. And, right. um, and waited and waited and waited. <laughs> and um, after four months received a, a letter, I was hoping that much to my surprise that they were interested in publishing Touch mm. My Stars. And so from then on, it was another six month process. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of work. It, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, when you paint, since I'm a painter, I'll, I'll use that as a metaphor. You know, you do the sketch, I do anyway. I prepare sketches and then I transfer the sketch onto the canvas and then I put an undercoat on, on the canvas first and then I keep adding layers and layers and layers until it all comes mm -hmm. together. And so the, the cover of Touch by Stars is a painting um, mm -hmm. that I did. Uh, that I hope it's a beautiful painting. I've seen the cover of them. Yeah. And so... And so the same thing happens with words. And when you're creating stories through poetry mm -hmm. um, is <laughs> uh, you go through that process of um, how can less be more? And that's the best way I can frame mm -hmm. editing. <laughs> how can you um, absolutely, you know, craft your work down to the essence of what you're trying to say? And I think that's uh, what we do. Mm -hmm. That's what I do when I paint. And and so uh, it eventually worked out. It took a while because I had never gone through this process before. I had, had no idea what I was getting into, and I'm, I'm glad I did not know. <laughs> um, Part of the dis fun of it is the discovery yeah. process. And, uh, you know, when you find an editor that is willing to sit with you and, and kind of help, you know, give you a balanced opinion of your work, it's the most, it's a great gift. It really is. Cause most, I mean, most people, it's hard to find somebody that believes in your work, you know, yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, uh, I thought, well, maybe it's the topics, some kind of magic or some kind of energy from the universe is kind of moving this along mm -hmm. as another way of telling the story. Um, but uh, also I, uh, uh, I realized that uh, poets, really get to the underbelly mm -hmm. of uh, a topic. And right. Then you, then you craft it from there. And um, I, I like that. Uh, I like that role. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's I really the only like reason you do it. Only reason you can do it. Press. And hopefully uh, there's some kind of a gleaning of a meaning uh, when the reader reads mm -hmm. the poetry. Are you familiar with the uh, writer Victor Frankel? Oh, Victor Frankel! Thank you so, so much for even saying his name. Um, <laughs> when I when I was in high school, which has been quite some time ago, I read his um, uh, very small book, *Man's Search for Meaning*. Mm -hmm. And as you already know, Victor Frankel was a psychiatrist, Jewish, and was surviving being in a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. And what got him through was constantly searching for meaning. And it was in relationship to other people within um, his cell um, in the concentration camp. Mm -hmm. So he found that people who were people who were focused on something beyond themselves, were the survivors, Those right. were the folks that actually uh, left 
um, the concentration camp, what, what concentration camp, once they were liberated. Right. And I was just so enthralled by that tiny little book. Um, and I read it my freshman year of high school. Mm -hmm. um, I've never forgotten. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's such a gem and it's so profound. And that's, you know, I hope I touch a little bit in this collection um, on, on something that Mm -hmm. It's just a particle uh, as profound as what he wrote. Yeah, yeah he, he's interesting because of his experiences. I mean, I, from what I remember reading, he was developing logotherapy and his entire manuscript and, and research and study was completely lost during the process of uh, going through the, the camps. And he lost his wife and, and he tells these stories. And, and, and as you said, you know, his his search for meaning to use his term is what helped him overcome some of those troubles and you know to keep forward keep a forward thought you know something beyond this is going is the case you know, there's something bigger than than what's going on in front of me and this has to have i mean he said even the worst sufferings can be endured if you have some rationale for it yes and i um not that you ever want anyone to go through that right problem. right However, um, I was thinking about that, you know, when we all search for meaning, mm -hmm. how did that even happen? <laughs> yeah. How did that even begin? Way. I mean, that's right. uh, his yeah. is what you hope people end up with, his, what he wrote about it, in terms of his integration of that in his own um, mm -hmm. daily life, his own psyche. Um, but how does that start from the very beginning? Why do we push forward? Um, why are we not satisfied? You know, where mm -hmm. we start from, and um, what kinds of questions keep coming to us, whether we like it or not? You know, Victor Frankl was, was literally handed a, a horrendous experience to walk through. Mm -hmm. but, um, some of us are challenged because we need some kind of experience to start. You know. Right. It's a shove forward. Mm -hmm. you know, I think so. Yeah. Thank you for bringing up that book. Just, yeah, it's a wonderful book. I, I've read it a couple of times. I've read some of his other other. One of the things that is so counterintuitive his approach to psychotherapy because he says one of the first questions he asks when someone comes to him with trouble is he says, "Why have you not killed yourself?" And that makes them think. You know. It's a very counterintuitive approach. It makes them think, well, that, why have I not killed myself? Why am I still here? I'm enduring this horrible thing. And, and you know, why have I not just decided to give up? And some that makes you reflect back on your values and your, you know, what is it you want from life? And, and, and that's a good start. It's a good foundation for learning to uh, look at yourself. And, and as, you, as you're talking about the quest for meaning and where does it come from? And, and you know, how does our value system converge with that? And, and each person, I'm sure, has a different answer. And uh, it's really hard to, uh, it's really a really tricky, t you know, topic to come into. It's, and I'm really impressed that you consolidated this into a little poetry collection. It's really, really nice. And I think that's really fun, too, uh, you know, to, uh, to, you know, these are questions that poets deal with on large scale. Um, so, I mean, how do we how do we think about this in this era of, of so much conflict and with the, the lockdowns that have just occurred and are just loosening up and all the things that we have collectively been through, uh, humanly speaking, you know, how, how is this still relevant today? You know, someone asked me that, that question that you just quoted from Victor Frank. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's... Uh, You've heard of wounded healers. Have you heard that term? I'm not familiar with the term, no. Okay. So someone coined, um, I think a therapist coined the term wound, a wounded healer. So mm -hmm. we always think that we need to be perfect in order to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. There's also most of humanity uh, who have been wounded in some way. Right. Some more serious than others. And we have to figure out a way uh, to heal. Right. And, um, so I... I have experience in that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, so part of my um, search for me uh, was informed by that experience. Uh, that's Absolutely. I, me too. I, a lot of traumas and, and frustrations and, and a lot of uncertainties 
Yes. You know, and you want to dig. I mean, it's it, it, it's it's a mixed blessing because you don't want to go through terrible suffering. And but right. the endurance process and the development of the quest for knowledge and all that it tends to sort of seems to begin with some sort of um, you know that kind of uncertainty as to why me, why is this happening? Yeah, you know, and it's, dig it's into also, it. Yeah, it's a quest for knowledge, but it's also a quest for um, understanding, um, forgiveness. Um, mm -hmm. A quest for opening up, uh, a quest right. for wisdom, for you know, trying to um, after going through so many things and also reading and researching and all of that, how do we glean from that some wisdom? How do we um, also mm -hmm. uh, bring that wisdom to other, um, to relationships, either to our work, to our personal relationships, uh, to understanding the world? So you asked me how you know, with the pandemic and so many other um, challenges, and, and they've been critical challenges, they have been horrendous challenges, mm -hmm. that the world is experiencing now together uh, for the first time in a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, over a hundred years. So what does that mean? And um, I, uh, I uh, work on trying to improve um, social policies that impact people directly. So in Cincinnati, Ohio, you know, the pandemic hit here like it did everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And um, I was had the privilege of being um, part of what they called a COVID-19 COVID um, gathering of emer emergency shelter care providers. Mm -hmm. And they had been meeting just a week before the uh, COVID-19 hit our area. But I joined in about midway. And I was so impressed with um, how they focused on the people they served in the shelter, mm -hmm. um, how they planned together sometimes three times a week. And this involves city staff as well as emergency shelter staff, as well as um, a doctor and how to expand the shelters, how to plan for that, how to make sure folks um, in the shelter or in each shelter, shelter uh, eventually receive the vaccine. Um, and it was just very grueling work, what they had to do to expand in order um, to prepare for the future. So um, my, what I'm hoping is my second collection of poems. Um, I have already started writing mm -hmm. some poetry regarding uh, the pandemic. Wow, I look forward to that. We're going to take a brief break and uh, enjoy this poetry performance by Todd Cirillo with music by Sokka Sen. And remember that donations are making us better. So please feel free to donate, guys out there. Enjoy this performance. The prisoner, I can still smell you on my pillowcase, in the comforter, and sheets. Thought about doing laundry, but decided to keep you with me just a little while longer. Riding giants. Each new love affair is like standing in front of a 50 foot wave. It looked doable from shore. Gifts. The son of a bitch left me broke and blacked out with a stripper's name written in black sharpie on my forearm. Three bright orange traffic cones in my bedroom and a two day hangover. He is the best friend ever. Wishful thinking. We kissed once. It was on the corner of Rampart Street in St. Peter, New Orleans. I wish I could say it was that magic movie moment with the perfect song, perfect setup, lighting just right and bright orange moon overhead, anticipation giving way to action like the final scene in 16 Candles when the two main characters are kissing on a table, birthday cake shining with lit candles in between and nothing left to wish for. And when the credits rolled, Everyone was already halfway home, satisfied and happy with what the stars brought to them. But our kiss wasn't like that. It was sloppy, 
We were drunk. The music sucked. There was spilled beer and strangers crowding our space. We could not really call it romantic. We could only admit that it happened once. There have been no second chances. I have had a thousand more moments between that kiss and today. Some amazing, others incredible, fulfilling and fun, but all have put me here, back here, alone, staring at the stars with only one wish left. In the corner, brought to you by New York Parrot TV, the voice for humanity. Welcome back to Parrot Literary Corner. We have Margaret Fox today. I hope you guys are enjoying the discussion we're having. It's a very big discussion. It's hard to fit into a 40 minute program, but we're doing it. Thanks for watching. So Margaret, would you like to share a couple of the poems from your book? Sure, that'd be great. Um, let's see. This is called The Night Light. Mm -hmm. They looked up from the beginning of their time on earth, held captive by the luminosity in the nighttime sky. As men, women, and children, they wondered, who made these lights in the sky? Perhaps some energy or magic tried to talk, the way they talked when painting bison, horses, or bears in caves. They looked up from the beginning of their time on earth, astonished. Nighttime lights appear, disappear, and reappear. The light Einstein would bend and Planck would call quantum. Light appearing everywhere. A mysterious light hidden in the men, women, and children who wondered and found comfort in knowing that they did not know. They went on wondering why and how and from where this light shone a compass that gave them direction at night, and discovery by day. Hmm. That's quite profound there. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's pretty, it's written pretty um, easily. You can easily understand it, but there's so many layers of thought. I mean, you can see that you can, if you, you know, really take a moment to think about what's being said, there's a lot of, you know, um, convergence of different disciplines in that and a lot of thought you know that's uh, it can be unraveled throughout but you manage to cut it into like this little you know thing you know this this poem you know to consolidate all that meaning and thought into the into this one i mean that's one of the weird things i find is, is about poets and poetry is you're able to take so much of the knowledge and on and all the various you know aspects of uh learning out there uh, the various disciplines and and you have the sciences and all the you know everything from psychology and you know you know cosmology as you said and all these other disciplines and you just put it into this poem that is like a page long maybe two pages you can put all that there and when someone reads it they don't have to necessarily know all those things that went into the to the process they just they can just read it and enjoy the beauty in the moment of what you uh, read so that's it's excellent thank you for sharing that Oh, you're welcome. And would you like to share another? Sure. Um, do you want a shorter one? And uh, you can read as long as you'd like. Okay. Um, well, let me do a, a part in search of a hole. A self, a part made whole again. Wants to know, reason, feel another, cells of life on earth. Object becomes subject. Subject becomes object, one living organism. A request, petition, demand for poesis, to make, an echo peace be or go with you. Life on earth, hearts reflecting each other, become a whole new effect. Observation, insight, make a discovery embraceable. Embodiment, beckons the sum of its parts. To understand a mystery, a path made up of energies, a poet begging for alms to make us live again. Wow, there's a lot of um, dialectical thought there. Um, and I think you, you pretty much nailed the uh, entire, you know, why we search for meaning there in that poem. 
you know, it's part of trying to reconcile ourselves with what's out there. And, uh, and you know, that struggle is presented in there and then a language that's very philosophical and, and um, mindful. So it's, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful poem. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, I had, you know, this is kind of a this is probably a bigger question than we have time for, but maybe you could give a little little insight as to, you know, when we talk about meaning and wisdom, and we go through all of this, you know, this uh, gamut of you know craziness that we experience, and and then we're, it's almost like we're rewarded with this morsel of wisdom. Why why do you think that you know that keeps us going? How how is it that that search is able to make us uh stronger and better and just like it's like almost looking like for the carrot on the stick you know it's like it keeps moving away and pulling away but we keep we keep digging for it we keep looking for it yeah. well i think it's a great question by the way um, right it's a very hard question i've i've dealt with it for years right you um, know well you must know then that your experience once you find tiny morsel of wisdom that it, it feeds your energy for a long time. Right. Do you find that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so I think it takes us to a different place. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't think it's just, um, it goes away. Right. I think it's stored in our consciousness. And so we start from there, from that new understanding and we keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then we find, another and you and don't you ever feel like uh, you go wow you know i was actually happy or i felt like everything came together in that moment mm -hmm. and it's that kind of gift i think well for me um you know i would like to experience more and it, it usually is focused mm -hmm. um not just on myself but on something bigger than myself Sometimes when in my writing, I use a, a, a reference, an anthropological reference to describe that as weaving a tapestry. You know, there's all these threads going through the loom and and eventually, you know, at some point they, they create a basket or whatever it is. And, you know, that at that moment when you tie that last knot, that's that's where you realize, you know, all of this purpose, you know, where it came from and what it was meant to set, what it was serving. You know, there's like something intriguing intriguing about that and and how how it's like a a kind of uh quest you know there's all these different mythological um you know allegories of, of that kind of represent that like you can talk about the labyrinth or you know any number of uh, you know mythological creations that describe this exact process in a way that uh so humanized you know mm -hmm. you, you know it's very interesting and and we i think as as a race, as you know, as a general picture, we've developed our knowledge to an extent that we we're seeing a bigger picture than we did when we were like you know early humans, uh, and so that and we have a we're a worldwide civilization now, you know we're not just you know these this little tribe coming out of one space, you know it's like so now we got this big picture and we're looking at it and it, and rather than it being so overwhelming, it's something about it is. Uh, is, is deep it's it's impressive and it, and it's uh you know it's confusing but it, it creates a lot of um you know hope for for something possible to happen something new something fresh mm -hmm. uh, so we're a lot of political upheavals yeah. and all that's going on right now and a lot of that is uh something I, i've kind of paid attention to and it's uh it seems like we're pushing for a, this this new civilization in a way it's like some, some kind of renaissance that i feel coming you know, in general, I don't know how you feel about that. I think uh, the love is getting deeper and um, mm -hmm. uh, broader, um, if that makes any sense. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I mean, this country has gone through uh, quite a tumultuous um, time, even before the pandemic hit. Right. And um, lots of awarenesses happened during the pandemic. Um, regarding race um, and um, mm -hmm. equality and uh, disparities. And I think uh, we have come full circles and are discovering where we need uh, to begin again. Right. And um, uh, I think that's a healthy, painful, but healthy 
response. So I, I have a, a lot of hope now and, and for our future. Uh, it, mm -hmm. It's built on those, you know, uh, those kernels of wisdom that she described earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. And that the, you know, that becomes part of our consciousness. And each time we receive something else, it gets a bit more deep and aware. And so uh, I think we're in a very exciting time, as difficult mm -hmm. times as it is. I mean, when you think of, you think of the first responders during this pandemic, um, I don't know about you, but I, you know, I just marvel at their capacity right. for service and love and, mm -hmm. and being on the front line. And, and I also am including, you know, nurses, doctors, firefighters, police, uh, but also social workers, uh, clergy, uh, you know, your best friend, whatever. Right. Uh, that really uh, uh, made a difference, at least for me, during the worst of times during the pandemic. Yeah, it's definitely it's it's better to have a perspective of seeing the hope and the love going around than trying to look at it from a, an angle of look at all the death and destruction. What are we going to do? How hopeless this is. Kind of a nihilistic look, you know, like look at all this death. We deserve this. There are people that really we deserve this. We've been so mean and bad. We deserve this kind of, you know, that that's just negative. And I, I try to transcend that myself. I want to thank Don Bucus for saying, great to be back from my hiatus and seeing this platform go from strength to strength. Great guest. Thank you so much. I'm sure Margaret also appreciates that. Thank you. Uh, and remember that our donations help us be move from strength to strength and make us better. So if anybody out there has a little extra to spare, please uh, feel free to send it to our PayPal. Uh, so, you know, back to the, the poetry, uh, what writers inspire you to continue this quest and who originally sort of, you know, made you think, you know, I could be a writer, you know, were there a set of writers maybe, or a few philosophers you read that just, you just were enthralled with everything they said and you moved into a kind of, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. Well, um, I've always uh, been on kind of a spiritual quest, but I, uh, just as much um, uh, art has uh, given me a great deal of energy and uh, mm -hmm. strength. And so um, a variety of poets, uh, you know, Mary Oliver, um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have my list in front of me. Right. Uh, but her, because of her love of nature and her, mm -hmm. her ability to observe and to create many layers of understanding in her poetry. Um, I like Keats. Mm. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, I'm a huge yeah. fan too. Yeah, um, those are just a couple. Um, I think, um, oh, Rita Dove mm -hmm. is another um, poet yeah. I enjoy. Uh, but there are so many good poets, you know, I, it's, it's hard to identify them. I also um, love all kinds of art, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that has given me a lot of energy as well as uh, keep, you know, some of the classes I've gone through to learn to paint and, and uh, all of that's been very exciting for me. But the other thing too mm -hmm. I, I wanted to mention is my um, work um, in areas of uh, social policy and justice. Mm -hmm. um, the organization I work for, we've done um, a fair amount of work with immigration and immigration immigrant reform, immigration mm -hmm. reform. And um, we have uh, partnered with other community organizations um, to um, try to give an identity to immigrants that helps them settle more easily in our region of Southwest Ohio. Mm -hmm. And we have these, um, what we call Mark ID, um, Drives, so immigrants, returning citizens, any any person that feels vulnerable and needs a photo ID, um, and that has been an incredible um, experience, uh, particularly with a variety of immigrants from all parts of the world uh, who come to this area in Cincinnati, Ohio, or Southwest Ohio, 
uh, you know, from Africa to India to uh, uh, Colombia to uh, from Honduras to Guatemala, uh, Nicaragua. Um, it, it's just been incredible, some from Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I have felt that in the city of Cincinnati and the county that surrounds it, across the river in certain parts of northern Kentucky, have um, opened you know, their doors and have granted through this photo ID card all the municipal services uh, that an, an individual who is a card holder uh, can access mm -hmm. and housing, um, emergency services, anything like that. So I, I feel like uh, we've um, recreated because of the various community organizations in our area and the various denominations, um, you know, Chris, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, um, we had the, the opportunity uh, to have, to make this ID card mm -hmm. and give immigrants, returning citizens, seniors who may need a photo ID, whatever, um, an opportunity to connect with this community for the first time or reconnect. And, uh, you know, that's been pretty exciting. You know, I, I just get a little inkling that of what it must have been like to uh, uh, come to this country uh, during the immigration waves uh, mm -hmm. from across uh, the ocean. So it's been it's been very exciting. Interesting. That's wonderful work to do. Yeah. What would your final message be for our viewers today? Uh, continue. Have hope. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's easy to integrate all the experiences you have, whether they're positive or very challenging and maybe negative, that they those energies can be transformed. And part of the way to transform them is to accept yourself and then look to beyond yourself and serving somebody in whatever capacity that can be. It can be as an artist, it can be as, as an um, interviewer on the <laughs> literary corner. <laughs> you know, it can be, um, you know, emergency service worker. It can be anybody. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. So do you have any thank yous or shout outs you'd like to give on the program while you're here? Um, I'd like to thank uh, Finishing Line Press. Absolutely. Um, for um, uh, publishing uh, my collection of poetry. Um, I would like to thank my thesis mentor, um, Guy uh, Bernico from mm -hmm. uh, Antioch University and uh, Susanna Fest from Antioch. Um, I also would like to thank uh, Tongue and Groove and um, uh, for sponsoring reading of my poetry. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to thank uh, the place where I work. It's called Mark. It's an interfaith organization mm -hmm. uh, for uh, honoring all parts of myself, for having hope, and for um, implementing that hope in our local community to solve problems um, that are very, fairly challenging in housing, immigration, uh, and improving uh, community police relations. And uh, and I hope uh, to come up with a, uh, another collection of poetry in the near future. And thank you, Justin. Oh, yes. you're quite welcome. It's It's yeah. been wonderful, really interesting conversation yeah. about, you know, just all kinds of things that we face as, as people on this planet and, and the vast and immense, you know, wealth of uh, uh, possibilities we, we see. And when we wake up every morning and we take for granted that we're spinning on a ball around us, around a, you know, this plasmic glowing thing and in this immense wide, you know, universe that we don't understand. We only have an inkling of where we're at and who we are and what we're doing. So, and it's interesting to think that, you know, how much could be going on that is, that could potentially be dis com completely disastrous, how we're if it's so fragile in that way. Yeah. that you know something could happen any minute and here we are you know pondering the the depths and the 
you know, of the reality we, we face. So thank you so much for bringing that kind of conversation to our program. Oh, it's you're probably been wonderful. I hope to see that book succeed and do well. And I hope to see you put out another book uh, yeah. and, and what your perspective on the pandemic is. So thank you again. It's been wonderful and pleasant talking with you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. This has been the Parrot Literary Corner. I'm Dustin Pickering, and we talked with Margaret Fox today. It was an excellent conversation about the various uh, disciplines of knowledge and how we develop meaning and thought and then the wonderful you know, aspect of life. We can look at it from so many angles and why we should be continue to have hope and love in this, this very decadent and, and destructive age we're living in. Thanks for uh, James Dennis Casey IV. Nice, glad I caught this. Great interview, I enjoyed it. Thank you so much, James, for watching. It's it's wonderful. Without viewers like you, we would just uh, be speaking to dead air, and we don't want to do that. We want people to pay attention and listen and, and learn from what we're saying. And as, speaking of learning, and uh, if you're a creative writer or some sort of creative person, we want to have you on the program. So we invite you to reach out. Here, uh, I'm Dustin Picker. You can get in touch with me at uh, the Literary Corner um, email, which is uh, literarycorner at newyorkparrot.com. And remember, you can support us not only by joining on the program and asking other people to get in touch with us if they're interested as to be a guest. You can also donate. Uh, as, uh, as they say, uh, we, we definitely will appreciate the uh, donations. And you can do that at paypal.me slash nyparrot. I especially want to thank Leah Maines. She's been a huge and tremendous support oh, for a long time, uh, some, giving us guests and helping us uh, with uh, finances and everything that she's done for us. We were greatly appreciative of Leah Maines, and I hope she's doing well today. And I hope she's viewed the program and shares it as she usually does. So um, we have the anthology coming out December 1st. So if you've been a guest on the program, we invite you to be in touch with us um, this past quarter. Uh, so please uh, don't hesitate at all to email if you have any questions about the anthology. Uh, we want to get this in people's hands. It's another way we do fundraising and, and improving what we're doing in our networking and everything we we do as a uh, as a program and as a you know as a uh, institution. So uh, this is the only and best global platform for creative minds. And please, without hesitation, you can donate. You can invite people to be our guest. Get in touch with me. Uh, there's no reason why, you know, to hesitate at all. You know, if you're shy, you know, hey, we work with you. You know, we like shy people. It's fun. You know, we'll, we'll draw the humanity from you. Like, uh, you know, pulling water from a well, you know, we'll do, we'll do it. We'll get you guys talking about the most interesting things that interest you and fascinate you as artists and creatives. So uh, get to writing, get to your poetry, your, your artistry. Get out there and, and, and help people and do things that are good for the world to improve and beautify this planet. Uh, we need to keep doing that. So I'm Dustin Pickering. I hope you guys out there have a wonderful afternoon. Enjoy the program tomorrow. The Listen to the people. Listen to humanity. Listen to the parent. Parent TV. Brought to you by New York Parrot TV.